thought I'd take a few minutes just to offer a couple of thoughts. And yeah, I, I would start, start by saying, you know, many of you uh, are far more expert about the issues around, say, environmental science than me. Um, but I've had a chance to learn uh, more and more over the past couple of years, and I, I can perhaps speak best as a, a general business leader uh, who needs to think about this every day. Um, and I'd really touch upon two things. The first is what we're doing at Microsoft and, and some of the learning that I think is most interesting. And then the second is I think where this points for all of us, uh, in particular, as we think about the role of business in the business community over the next few years. Uh, I wanna focus on carbon among the various uh, areas of sustainability. And as you heard, you know, we've committed to be carbon negative by the year 2030, and then to keep becoming more negative every year so that by the year 2050, we'll have removed from the environment all of the carbon that uh, Microsoft has emitted since the company was founded in 1975. Um, now, when you step back and think about that, you know it's pretty obvious that it requires that for us and for everybody, we have to do two things. One is we have to reduce our carbon emissions every year. And the other is we have to increase our carbon removal every year. Uh, this past year, we reduced our emissions by about 7%. We started uh, in 2020 with an annual number of about 16 million metric tons, bigger than many companies, but I'll bet it's a small number, uh, you know, compared to a, you know, a number of other industries uh, and some of the companies that are represented here. Um, our internal carbon tax has been an important part of what we've been using to reduce our emissions. Um, and I appreciate the nudge on our scope three aspect. Um, for several years, we have had an internal carbon tax on scope one and two. We raised that a couple of years ago to $15 a, a metric ton. Um, we expanded it to scope three a year ago. And when we started, we started at $5 a metric ton. And we're going to raise it uh, by a dollar every year, but maybe we should go faster. Um, since this is real money that gets paid in from every part of Microsoft, um, I sort of like to play the role that I get to play as sort of the finance minister and tax collector and ultimately the appropriator because we take this money and we spend it to try to accelerate our reductions more broadly. Um, now, interestingly, you might ask, what's the biggest part of, of carbon emissions at a company like Microsoft? Well, at one level, scopes one and two especially, especially scope two, it's our worldwide data centers. We have a huge footprint of worldwide data centers and obviously that's growing every year. We've said all of that will be running 100% on green energy by 2025. What's our biggest aspect beyond that? It's scope three and it's really our hardware, not surprisingly. It's our Xboxes, it's our surfaces, yeah, you know, not just for the supply chain, which is considerable, but the use of those products because they require electricity either to run or to charge the batteries. Um, but you know, I will say you know, our uh, internal carbon tax has been enormously helpful for us. The other aspect of it, when you think about what it has meant to extend that to scope three, is the collaborative exercise it has really created um, with our supply chain. You know, to reach back into every component in a country like China and to be able to know reliably and accurately, you know, how much carbon is being emitted for each and every piece that's being created. You know, that's an extraordinarily complex exercise. Um, but it, it, and it's one that we're learning an enormous amount and I'll come back to it in a moment. Um, but I'm excited that through those kinds of things, our emissions are going down and they'll go down at a pretty steady rate as we project each year. Now, the other part that has been so interesting is the removal side. And I think the first big question is always, what do you really count? Um, you know, I'm always struck by this as sort of, I'll call it a relative newcomer. I sort of scratch my head when I see the number of people who will uh, count you know, the money that they spend to say, pay somebody not to cut down a tree. And I'm like, well, that's good. It's good that we're not cutting down that tree. But when you do that, you're actually paying somebody to do nothing. We are not going to solve this problem by doing nothing. We have to pay people to do something. Uh, 
And we have to pay them to do the right things and to do things they wouldn't otherwise have done in order to really move the needle on climate change. So one of the things I'm really excited about is we made the largest corporate carbon remo removal purchase in history this past year, purchasing the removal of 1.3 million metric tons through a global RFP process. That was a great step. And I'll tell you, 10 years from now, we'll all look at back at that and go, oh my gosh, that was like the smallest drop in the biggest ocean you ever saw in terms of the amount of carbon that we collectively have to remove from the environment every year. Um, part of the connection there is obviously, as you heard, our billion dollar climate innovation fund. Because the reality is most of our removal this past year was in nature-based efforts, soil sequestration and the like. We desperately need technology that doesn't exist today. We will need an industry that doesn't exist today with things like direct air capture. And that's where some of our innovation fund money is, is flowing. That's where a small part of our carbon removal this past year was able to go. So I was excited by that. Now, what does this mean as we look to the future, especially for business? I would highlight three things. One, I almost think the job one for the next 24 months is for everybody to work around the world to establish what we need for everything, which is a globally standardized, accurate, and reliable way to agree on what we are measuring and how we are measuring it. You know, I'm often struck, just think about something that has been part of our lives since each of us were you know, basically toddlers. We lived in places where our parents probably paid for the electricity bill. And you know, in, in the olden days, meaning the 20th century, you know, people from the electric company would sort of walk around a neighborhood and they'd look at the electric meter and they'd write down the number and that's how you got charged. Well, think about what that meant. There was an agreed basis on you know, the unit of measurement, a kilowatt hour, uh, and embedded throughout the electrical grid was a way to measure how much electricity was being consumed. This is what we'll need for carbon. You know, just We will need a future where for every product, it'll be like going to the grocery store. And we can see what the ingredients are in every food item. We can see how many calories we'll consume if we eat that product. We will want to see a future where we'll know for every product how much carbon was emitted when it was created. And savvy buyers can use this as a choice when they decide what to buy. We'll need it at an enterprise level. We'll need it at a state level. We'll need it as at a national level. But it create it requires the equivalent of of that kind of infrastructure. So that's what we're focused uh, in part with our suppliers on creating. We're working with customers, and you know, mark your calendar. Uh, next week is an exciting week because June fourteenth comments are due with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, so that the SEC can begin to think about what kind of disclosure requirements it will have for public companies. Ultimately, it'll have to be disclosure based on accurate measurement. So you'll see us leaning in on that next week as we're advocating for that as one of many tools to drive this forward. The second thing is straightforward, but you referred to it, Kathy, and that is we need to compensate people based on enterprise progress in reducing carbon emissions. I'm excited because starting July 1, part of my compensation and the compensation of the most senior leaders at Microsoft will be based on reductions in carbon emissions as part of our ESG goals. And I think this is something that we're going to see spread rapidly throughout the business community, certainly for all public companies and then beyond. And then finally, and Kathy, you referred to this, we need to build a functioning global market for carbon removal because we're never going to get to net zero unless people are purchasing the removal of carbon to offset the carbon they're emitting. We're still going to have carbon emitted in some measure, even in the year 2050. So we need a, a vibrant carbon removal market. And I think this is something that is such a great opportunity for governments to come together, for businesses to come together, for NGOs 
like the World Environment Center to really play a leadership role. And I'll just give you one of my favorite opportunities. We live in a world where many governments pay farmers to do nothing. Don't plant a crop on that soil. Let's instead move that so that governments are paying farmers to actually grow cover crops in the winter that will remove carbon from the environment. And let's not only have governments pay them, let's create a market where with IoT devices, it's commonplace for farmers to be able to measure the amount of carbon that has been sequestered in their soil. Let's add to that and give companies the opportunity to enter that market and in effect inject their capital to grow it and pay more farmers to remove more soil, I'm sorry, to remove more carbon and sequester it in the soil. That's just one and other example. So as you can see, um, I went from being a novice on this issue to still being a novice on this issue, but a passionate uh, advocate of what I think we in business have the opportunity to do. And more than anything else, I hope that we can continue to work with all of you so we can learn together and use our voice and spread the word and lead to real action on a global basis.